Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully you're going to have a beautiful week and it's a beautiful Monday for you. There was a magnitude 3.3 earthquake off the coast of Oregon, 10 kilometers in depth. They often put 10 kilometers when they're not quite sure how deep the earthquake was. And it's kind of hard to uh, determine that. You need uh, to triangulate the earthquakes in a triangle, you know, top and right and left. And it's kind of hard to do when you don't have earthquake monitors off out in the ocean. Using Google Earth, here's the location of that earthquake along the Blanco Fracture Zone. You can see the direction uh, that this portion of the Juan de Fuca Plate, the fault zone, is moving. And the Juan de Fuca Plate's been divided up into three sections. We got the Explorer Plate up off of Canada and Washington, the Juan de Fuca Plate off of Oregon and Washington, and then we got the Gorda Plate. And I want to talk about what's going on here with the Motol Canyon Fault. This fault zone is an extension of the San Andreas Fault Zone. In the last week, there's been nine earthquakes along this fault zone. It was the location of the 1992 Cape Mendocino earthquake, a magnitude 7.2. There was also a 6.6. .6 this is the Mendocino Triple Junction, and what makes it so significant, what's going on, is it shows that the San Andreas Fault and the Motol Canyon Fault have built up tension, and it's got nowhere to go. Um, it's being blocked, stopped by the Gorda Plate, because these two plates are moving in two different directions. Eventually, something's going to happen. That pressure building is going to pop. According to SeismoBerkeley.ed, they have an article about this earthquake that occurred in 1992. It was two and a half miles east of Petrolia. The town suffered severe damage and a gas station burned to the ground. The earthquake shook the fire station so greatly that they couldn't get the garage doors open to get the fire engines out. It says elsewhere in Northern California, more than 350 people were injured and several hundred homes were badly damaged. Oh, that was an aftershock, the 6.5. Liquefaction occurred. A caterpillar tractor that was um, evidently ended up stuck in the mud because the ground turned to liquefaction all the way up to its axle. The coast uplifted. There was a small tsunami in Crescent City of 10 inches, and about 100 miles away, a tsunami was recorded of 20 inches. Eyewitnesses on beaches, however, suggested that the peak of the tsunami water height was about 3 feet. Since 1873, there's been at least 8 earthquakes with a magnitude of 6 or greater. Now, this article was published in 2017. The region around Pretoria, Cape Mendocino, and Punta Gorda, the Gorda Plate, which are just 10 miles from each other, is not only the northern terminus of the San Andreas Fault. There, the interaction between the Pacific and North American Plate fundamentally changes its character. While the two plates scrape by each other horizontally along the San Andreas Fault, a subduction zone begins north of Petrolia in Cape Mendocino. There, the Gorda Plate and further north, the Juan de Fuca Plates dive under the North American continent. And according to Berkeley.ed, because of this complex tectonic dance of the various plates, a lot of stress accumulates in the region and frequent earthquakes are the consequence. According to USGS, there are 16 earthquakes of a magnitude 2.5 or greater in the last 30 days. And I'm going to see if I can bring this out a little bit for you. There you go. They don't show the smaller quakes. I suppose I should start keeping a little bit better track of them. But this is a lot of quakes of late. Now we got a 4.88. That was in March. Um, this 2.9, now that was on June uh, 
15th. This one was today the 2.5. And I drew out the fault line through here. Uh, we got a 1.8 also. That is from July 31st, the end of last month, a 2.7. Uh, March 9th, a 2.4. That was on June 14th. And we got this one here. Um, June 30th, a 1.3. And there's another one, a 1.3. The St. Andrew's Falls is trying to move. And it can't move. It's being blocked. Are you prepared for a disaster? Does anyone know if the fire department there in Petrolia still uh, <laughs> keep their fire trucks inside, inside closed doors? Do you have an evacuation plan where to meet family members after a large earthquake? Do you have an out-of-state phone number that all family members would call if the phone services are overwhelmed? Text messaging might still work, and you can use that out-of-state person, kind of like an operator, to pass information uh, back and forth uh, where you maybe want to meet up with somebody, what the current situation is for your health or injuries, uh, supplies, etc. Things that you should carry in your bug-out bag besides medical supplies, food and water, a face mask, running shoes, a uh, backup battery pack, to plug your cell phone into. I've had mine for about a year and I was surprised the other day when I plugged it in it still almost had a full charge after sitting for a year and it only cost me twenty dollars. I have a whistle attached to my keys that way if you get trapped in debris and are too weak to call for help maybe you can at least blow on the whistle. My purse probably could be just Described as a deadly weapon for how heavy it is. It's an oversized purse. I also have in there a flint so I could uh, make a fire. Say I want to make a signal fire or want to boil water or cook a can of beans. I also have um, a small pocket knife, um, a charger to go into the um, automobile cigarette lighter for charging my phone. An extra wire uh, for the battery for two different size phones in case I want to charge someone else's phone that isn't the same as my um, iPhone. Cash and coins. Coins are in short supply. I don't have a lot of coins, but I do have cash money in case the ATMs aren't working. A pen and paper to leave notes. I also have crayons. You can always scribble on a side of a building with crayons, I suppose, and leave a message for somebody. Uh, crayons can also be used as a candle. I also have a small flashlight in my purse. And of course, with uh, the new apps and these new iPhones, you, you have a flashlight on your phone, but it, that would quickly drain the battery of your, your cell phone. So if you have any other thoughts or things that you might be able to carry with you, in a small backpack or an oversized purse like mine is, please put it down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe. Always be prepared for a disaster you've been told over and over and over. So there's no excuse to think of not just yourself, but maybe your loved ones and grandchildren or children or other friends and families. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.